helps cut down on robber bees. Where do you get the insurance for bees? You make it. Okay. You make it out of, out of scrap wood. We'll have okay. plenty of scrap out here. Right. Like all the other meat is smoked in a high tool, you can be bailed, gloves if you want them, or protection if you think you need it. Same deal, where are we going to get bees? Uh, this is a house we opened up out of Little Cypress. It was a carport, actually. The people called, they were getting ready to sell it. They thought they wanted the, these bees out of it. They'd been in there for quite a while. And it had this uh, cedar siding on it, board and batten. There was one knot hole, and that's where they were going in. Uh, we got about 40 pounds of honey out of this one. The more we opened it up, the more cold it was. Started pulling the tar paper off. You can see some of the brood here. You can see brood and pollen. You can see little gold flecks, yellow fleck. And then over here is honey stored. This was one out in Meeker, Texas. Anybody know where Meeker, Texas is? Quite a coincidence, because I didn't know where it was either. This lady called me to come and get these bees. You go over to Beaumont, go out to Island, go as far as you can on the island, you cross the railroad tracks way out there, and the road narrows down the, the cattle trail, and then you're in Meeker. <laughs> this thing was passed away to own the house, and they had some cement rock set up, and on top of it was a big old rock they picked up up in North Dakota. And they made a shrine in their backyard. I don't, know, I don't know what kind of shrine it was, but the bees took it over. And I've never seen one quite like this. The hole inside, there's actually three cement blocks piled up, was full of cone bees. Then they ran out of room and they started building comb on the outside. This was old comb because it was pretty brittle. And I never could figure out why they didn't swarm. To give them more room, because we've got them up. There's over 17 queen cells in there. They'd already raised 17 queens at one time or another. And it must have been a strong queen that started out where she could raise all those bees and, you know, <laughs> afford to have that collar split up that many times. But that was a lot of cold. So the lady there said, well, I'll just take those and make candles out of it. Well, she might have got enough out of this to make one can. That stuff is so thin, and it's it's so uh, there's not much body there. When you compress it up, there's not much there. This was an apartment house over in uh, Pinehurst. You can see the bees going in underneath here, and uh, my buddy here he started cutting across here with a saw to we figure out where they were going in. And this goes back up. This is just like Max Paycard's house. Mm -hmm. We thought maybe we had three or four different layers of comb going back in there. But we got into a mess here. I made a box to save some of the brood so I could transfer this back to some top bar hives. And what we would do, these are split top bars. I would plant the brood and then use my hive to scrape off the excess and snap a rubber band on the end. If you have brood in a hive, the bees generally will not leave. <coughs> you just pour a package in there, you're going to have to screen them to keep them from leaving till they figure out that's going to be their home. But if you have some brood in one, they'll stay there to take care of it. This shows some of the brood. You see how I squeezed that off. You see the brood here. On the back side, there was more. So here he is up here with a hoe handle. He's back in, he can tell to his wrist or almost elbow with his whole handle. And he's still breaking comb out. Before it was over, he was all the way back in there with that hole, breaking that comb and that honey out of there. Uh, we've already been through this, just to do a little bit. A three pound package bread clipped and marked queen. They can send them through the mail. Some beekeepers locally will sell you a package. Most of them don't have the packages like this though. Uh, the cage I showed you over here. Most beekeepers don't keep that. I've got three of these, so if somebody wants to go get packages from the beekeeper, I've got these. If y'all decide to get a bunch of y'all up and go to Navajo to buy them, they'll come in the package. Uh, 
Tom Barnhart no longer does this, but R. Weaver and uh, Bob Morlock, they still do it. There's no method design. Top bar height can be anything you imagine except you don't want them deep like this. In our part of the country, that foam is so heavy. In the summertime, if you bump this high, it'll collapse, it'll break that comb off. So 11 and a half inches is what I've been making of, and we've had real good success with, which is the width of one by 12. When you angle in, you want to wind up with about 11 inches of comb, and that's going to weigh six to eight pounds. Feel the honey, but there's all these designs, and set them on block. Uh, Gwen just bought one that, that's uh, set up similar to this. It, it doesn't have a on it, but she can move it around. Here's, here's what you do when you don't have anything else to do about carbon. <laughs> Somebody spends an awful lot of time on carbon. We have some mosaics attached. <laughs> so he said, well, you can't use this where it gets cold. Well, I told you you can. He's got an opening in each end here, way down low. Bees like to come in up high and work down. Uh, a lot of your commercial beekeepers actually plug off the bottom entrance and open the one up in the very top, drill a hole in the end of it. <coughs> and let the bees come in and go down. If they just call it nectar in, they don't have to come in the bottom and crawl up through the queen excluder and go up there. They go right in the top and right and start filling cold up. <clears throat> now we're just sitting on cross ties. I always like to think this guy just got through building his new home, so he took all his leftovers off the building. Here's a couple of them with one to four legs. You can just imagine when that thing's got about 60, 50 to 60 pounds of honey and bees in it, those legs are going to be awful clean. It looks like they've got them ready to go out. Got several of them in the back back here. Any, any questions? Because we're, we're open for questions now. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm counting on these guys pollinating my garden. Is there going to be something I'm going to put on my garden that's going to kill them? Any, any kind of uh, insecticide will kill them. So I put seven dust on my tomatoes. Won't seven will kill them. It won't kill nothing out of <laughs> might not, might yeah. not be enough in it to kill them. You, you have to double the amount, I've been told recently, to get back to the level that it used to be yeah. that you were told to put in. So how am I going to prevent killing my own bees? You're just going to be careful, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't really worry about it because I don't put that much out. If we start having trouble with uh, stink bugs and stuff, but most, most of the pollinate is already done by then. You might have a few blooms still on them. But all we're after is getting it on, on the fruit <coughs> itself, you know. Right. Uh, the uh, yeah, some of these powders that you're putting on it, you know, you're trying to shoot up from the bottom to get the bottom. <coughs> oh, the dust to yeah. the dust. And it's going everywhere. <coughs> I really can't answer that. I can't give you a good answer except if I got problems, I'm, I put stuff out. So, do what? It hasn't affected, affected the main height. We may have lost some bees. But the bees only, only live about three or four weeks anyway during the, uh, during the honey flow. But when the straw is there, but they just burn their wings out. That's why every, every 21 days, you've got another bunch coming out. It takes three weeks for the workers to hatch out where they can fly. Uh, it takes 16, 18 days for a queen and 23 days for a grow. So when that queen's laying and you see sealed over brood, you've got three weeks, all that brown leathery looking in there, you're going to have that many more bees coming out. So unless you've got a little 